And we're back now with the latest in our ongoing series focused on women's wellness. Endometriosis is a disease that affects one in 10 women worldwide. Endometriosis is a reproductive disease that affects women. About half of patients with it have fertility problems, and its cause is still uncertain today. Often we find endometriosis incidentally during an evaluation for other gynecologic problems or during an evaluation for infertility. So I was just, you know, I kept it to myself and I didn't really talk about it because this was just normal, right? Wrong. It's not normal. And that's why we need to make sure that women know that being in pain when you're menstruating is not normal. It's not okay. We can't minimize these, these people's pain and tell young women, oh, get over it, you're being sensitive, it's your period, because there could be an underlying issue that could kill them. That's very serious. So before I start this video, I want to make it known that I really want everyone, whoever is watching this video, to take away the importance of doing your own research, whether that be about endometriosis itself, um, the treatments associated with endometriosis, and even the doctor, because that's very important. And then also, if you are someone watching this who is struggling with symptoms, but you haven't been diagnosed yet, maybe you've had a really bad experience with going through multiple doctors or maybe your doctor's just kind of bypassing your symptoms as if it's nothing, go to another doctor and get yourself a diagnosis because the longer you wait, obviously the worse it's gonna get. And I mean, bottom line, it's your quality of life and it's never right to be in constant chronic pain. Obviously, I'm not a doctor and this is all actually very new to me. I've done a lot of research on endometriosis since being diagnosed, but if I get any medical terminology wrong, I apologize in advance. And if there's one thing that I learned myself, it's that everyone's endometriosis journey is so different. Um, there's definitely some common symptoms associated with the disease, but I'm gonna tell you right now, I really don't fit with the majority of the people who share the same symptoms. So keep that in mind while I share my personal endometriosis story. According to Mayo Clinic, endometriosis is a disorder in which tissue that normally lines the uterus grows outside of the uterus. Last August of 2019, um, they did like a routine ultrasound and through that ultrasound, they found a right ovarian cyst. At the time, it was uh, four centimeters long. Yeah. <laughs> From there, they weren't that concerned about it because usually, I mean, sometimes, most of the time actually, I believe um, they can disappear. At least that's how they explained it to me. So I had a follow-up appointment scheduled for two months later. Um, it was sometime in like mid-October. Mind you, um, I had no pain associated with this cyst and I really had no pain in general. You know, my periods were always every 28 to 30 days. I think the year before that I did have something irregular, but that was one time out of the 10 years I've been on my period. I never had heavy bleeding, you know, things were just kind of normal for me. So I think that's really important in my story is kind of focusing on how I at least thought I was, you know, pretty normal or healthy, you know, with my reproductive health and all that. Um, so endometriosis never once crossed my mind. In October, they did another ultrasound and the cyst was still there. I believe it was still four centimeters. It might have been a little bit larger, but not by much. And that doctor didn't mention endometriosis, nothing along those lines. She just said, you know, come back again in a few months and we're gonna look at it again and just make sure, keep tabs on it, see where it's at, if it got any bigger, if it got smaller. Um, things like that. At that appointment though, she did say if your leg starts to go numb and you feel excruciating pain, go straight to the emergency room because that probably means your cyst burst. But other than that, it was, you know, a chill, <laughs> chill. It was kind of a chill appointment. Um, there was nothing serious mentioned. So I actually decided to see another doctor within the same doctor's office. Um, I actually decided to go to a male doctor, so I scheduled an appointment with him in January and at that appointment he said, yeah, we need to look at that again because that's not normal. I got my third and final ultrasound um, regarding that cyst and it grew. It grew two centimeters from October. 
so it was a little over six centimeters at that point and that's when my doctor ordered a ct scan and that was scheduled within i want to say a week and a half from that appointment so now we're talking like mid to end january i got my ct scan uh, met up with my doctor to talk about the results of that and the cyst had grown a little bit larger um, within that time so that was within like a week and a half and the CT scan was able to describe the size, the exact size of it, what the cyst consisted of and it described you know this fluid trapped inside of it and that basically gave my doctor the answer that it was most likely endometrial growth. And that was the first time that I heard those words said to me by a doctor. I would have never ever dreamed that I had endometriosis, like, no. And I actually still didn't really even believe it when he told me. And that was because, like I said earlier, I never really had issues with my period. You know, like, I had a little bit of background knowledge of endometriosis and I knew that women who have it, you know, put up with a lot, a lot of excruciating pain. Um, pain so bad that they've ended up in the emergency room or they had to skip work or school or something and I've never experienced that. Looking back though I think I did have baby symptoms and that was I was always someone who just kind of thought I had IBS um, because I blow easily you know sometimes you just kind of have like bad days or bad weeks with your digestive system but again it didn't put me in pain but it was a discomfort so at that appointment when we talked about the details of my cyst through the ct scan that's when he said all right next step is surgery laparoscopic surgery to be exact a brief overview of laparoscopic surgery is it's basically a keyhole surgery so very very tiny incisions um, they go through your belly button and I had a few on my like lower right side a little bit on my upper right side and then and then I had an incision like below my belly button too so I was scheduled about two weeks after that um, my exact surgery date was February 18th I want to make a separate video on my surgery experience in general um, how to prepare for it what to expect and what to expect after your surgery because it's definitely weird <laughs> and it can be painful and also I ended up developing some complications after my surgery but that is a whole nother story in itself um, that I'm gonna make a video on so we'll get to that later so I had my surgery on February 18th 2020 um, just literally what would it be a little over a month ago I remember waking up and seeing my mom oh by the way the surgery only takes like it only took me like 45 minutes long my mom said which I was super surprised but through that surgery, they were able to drain the cyst. They removed a uterine polyp that I had. Um, and then he, the doctor was able to look around and actually diagnose me with endometriosis if I really did have it. Because with endometriosis, your uterine lining ends up growing outside of the uterus. So it could be, you know, anywhere from your pelvis or your stomach, your intestines, whatever it is. Um, the doctor looks for that growth. And it's actually really small and the colors can range from either like a dark red spot to a bright red spot it just depends on you know you and your diagnosis so I remember waking up and seeing my mom and I was really drugged up at this point and I was just like what did the doctor say did did he see anything and my mom just goes yeah you have stage 4 endometriosis and it's really bad and I was like, stage four? I went into the surgery thinking I had maybe stage one or stage two or none at all because like I said, I was asymptomatic. Um, I wasn't showing any symptoms of endometriosis in the past, minus the bloating. Um, but because I was drugged up, I was just like, all right, okay. <laughs> and then, you know, just kind of like didn't talk about it from there. A few days later, after all the drugs and medicine wore off, that's really when it hit me and from there I did so much research I was spending so much time on my phone online reading through articles finding support groups um, watching YouTube videos and I'm very happy I did and I want to influence all of you guys out there to do the same because there is a lot you can learn about endometriosis and I think the main important thing anyone can do for themselves 
is to pick the right doctor. There are more doctors who don't properly diagnose, treat, personalize patients um, in regard to endometriosis than there are that know how to and that can put you on the right treatment plan that's personal for you, um, that preserves your fertility because that's like my biggest concern. It can really be detrimental to your future and your health and you know if you're someone who wants to have kids in the future it's really really important um, to put yourself on the right plan. So yeah, if you guys have any questions about maybe what you're going through um, or maybe you want to know more about what I went through and my symptoms in general, um, just leave a question below. You can always DM me on Instagram too. It's at Erica Denver and it's in the link below. Um, and don't forget to subscribe so that you guys can follow me along with this journey. I kind of have a feeling it's going to be a long one. I mean, I know it will. Um, because now that I'm faced with reality and I know that I have stage 4 endometriosis and that it's bad and that it's everywhere, that can definitely affect my fertility and wanting to have kids and when I can have kids. Um, but the good news is, is we're on the right path for treatment and um, yeah, I think that's about it. Thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for the next video. Yeah, yeah.